Jennifer. I want to thank, I want to welcome you to the podcast. Um, Jennifer Fabe is with Matthews Friends Canada, who are a long time Purple Day partner. So, welcome. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? So, yeah, my name is Jennifer, and I am the president of Matthews Friends Canada. And Matthews Friends Canada is a um, branch of the global charity of Matthews Friends that is actually originated and based in the United Kingdom. Um, we carry forward the same mission that they, they have put forward to provide um, the public and people who are affected by epilepsy with evidence-based information about ketogenic diet uh, therapy as a treatment option for those who um, have epilepsy. And as well, a bit of my background is that I am an ongoing practicing dietitian, ketogenic dietitian in the area for the last 19 years at one of the largest tertiary care centers in Canada. And I'm based out of here in Ontario. And our Matthews Friends Canada office is based out of just outside Toronto in, in a city called Mississauga. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining in and working this into your schedule. Um, yeah. So the first question uh, is, what is the difference between the ketogenic diet for epilepsy and the ketogenic diet that people do to lose weight? That is a really good question, especially with how social media kind of confuses um, the public with the information out there. So they are two different things. Um, ketogenic diet for lifestyle is not one that is often medically supervised. So that's the number one difference. Um, it is often thought to be normal. Uh, it normalizes sort of what ketogenic diet is and the definitions of the ketogenic diet for lifestyle also vary. Um, so to comment on that, the ketogenic diet is not really a normal diet. It is um, a dramatic shift usually in the lifestyle world to go from low carb, high carb to low carb and to maybe increase protein and maybe increase fat depending on the definition that they use. Um, the evidence behind it isn't strong um, in that it will support weight loss. Um, people are, the, the claims that are often made aren't, aren't really substantiated strongly yet with um, scientific evidence. So it is, really is a sort of a, a, a beware when you're looking through the social media for ketogenic diet for weight loss. Um, but with the ketogenic diet therapy for for epilepsy, we use the phrase medically supervised. So the medically supervised ketogenic diet therapy for epilepsy is exactly that. It is a therapy that is supervised um, in, with a concert of people, the family, uh, the patient, but as well as a, an experienced ketogenic dietitian and of course a physician. And then you might have a nurse or a nurse practitioner, social worker or a, and a neuropsychologist that might come on board to help um, with the management, onboarding, and then sustainability of it. So it is quite a um, involved therapy that involves, it can involve a lot of people, um, just so that you can get the best um, support uh, possible. And when I say it's medically supervised, it's, it's medically supervised for a reason, because there are some inherent side effects to the ketogenic diet that um, we have to be aware of. And it should never be done, the ketogenic diet should never be implemented on its own because it has side effects that can happen when you onboard it or bring it on on initiation, or it can have long-term side effects that you need to have monitored. So that's why you need your medical team to be, um, be on board with you. In the lifestyle ketogenic diet, um, you may, may or may not have any monitoring, your, um, and you might actually create more harm to yourself than um, benefit because um, you might not be um, implementing it with um, the the right the right approach. Um, a common one in the lifestyle world that I see is that um, they aren't providing themselves with enough calories, right? So um, so you can see some um, changes in um, growth trajectory for some children who might implement it. Um, another common one would be um, uh, multiple vitamin and mineral deficiencies um, that people think that they can just correct using a multivitamin when they're using it for lifestyle. But that's not necessarily the case, right? So, so that's sort of the broad differences between the medically supervised and the lifestyle version of ketogenic diet. Okay, so it's kind of like, kind of like everything with epilepsy, it's, everything's different kind of. 
Yeah, that's right. And and the thing with with the medical medically supervised ketogenic diet for epilepsy, your team will most likely um, cater or streamline your version of the diet specifically for you. It's customized for you. That's generally sort of the practice. Um, and then uh, it's your dietitian and your physician that will help allow it to build into your lifestyle. Um, and so, and and the the prescription, you actually get a ketogenic diet prescription of how many grams of carbohydrate, protein, and, carb and fat you will actually be um, expected to consume or take in uh, to create a, um, a nutritional metabolic ketosis. And the goal for us is to create sort of a sustainable ketosis and, um, and not have lots of fluctuation in that therapy. So that's why it has to be sort of monitored and, and encouraged and supported. Because um, unlike if you take it upon yourself to do your own sort of lifestyle ketogenic, it is most likely that you're going to have a fluctuation in your ketotic state and it may not even achieve therapeutic value for you. Okay. Yeah. So interesting. It's good to know. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's something that's um, very much offered. I think in Canada, I think the characteristics that you need to know, I think Canada has been having practiced for a while. It's been, we're proud to say that it's been very much um, progressing and growing in the pediatric world, um, where almost every major center in Canada, Children's Hospital, is able to offer um, a supervised a team that can supervise the ketogenic diet therapy and offer it to their patients. Um, what is what we're trying to foster and grow now in Canada is the adult world. So the adults in our in that meaning those are who were 18 and over um, would need to find um, an adult epileptologist or neurologist that is able to specialize and provide that specialize in an area of ketogenic diet and support that and have also a dietitian there to support it. And as I understand, um, as I talk to colleagues across the country, that's still a little bit more scarce right now. We do have a very forward-thinking physician that's part of Matthew's Friends Canada, Dr. Edward Berkovich, um, who has one of the um, adult um, epilepsy centers um, and diet, sorry, diet therapy for epilepsy centers in Canada, um, and is pioneering that out of um, his own office here in Ontario. Um, and I believe there's some, you know, blossoming in other parts of Canada, like Alberta and another part of Ontario, but certainly not coast to coast yet. Okay. Yeah. So the ketogenic diet for epilepsy, it's, always, it's very, obviously seeming very important that you work with your medical team and your doctors then, rather than the lifestyle one where you, you, it's not with, you're not so like consulting medical with it, you're just kind of going with it. Yeah, and you're going and you're using different resources that are out there and kind of judging which resources are best for you, etc. So you let your team guide you to the proper resources that are evidence-based, based on the science that are best for you. Um, and they will also help, help you decide what type of ketogenic diet is suited best for you. So there's different versions of the medically supervised ketogenic diet that you may have heard of, um, where there's the modified Atkins approach or the low glycemic diet approach, or the classical ketogenic diet. There's another one called modified ketogenic diet, which is started in the United Kingdom and, and practiced um, throughout the world as well. And then there's the MCT diet, but all are medically supervised, all have their benefits, all have their um, challenges as well. So that's why, and, uh, you know, your team will know which sort of diet might be a better best fit for you. And you may not just try one, you might actually morph into another method in your journey of ketogenic diet because you might your lifestyle might change or your seizures might change so um, you may start with one method and transition to another method through your journey of ketogenic diet therapy another thing to consider with your team um, is to how how to initiate um, do you initiate the, the ketogenic diet therapy as an outpatient initiation um, and is that something that you guys have support to do or do you do it as an inpatient admission for about 
four to four to seven days, depending on your institution. And, and can your family accommodate that? Can you do that to take the time off work to initiate on an inpatient side? So lots of variables to consider, you know, with the diet. A lot of people think you can just do it from your kitchen and, and start it off like that, but it's not the case. You know, you have to yeah. be a, a bit more thorough and vigilant with your thinking. I never knew, realized that there was so many different types of it. Um, yeah. That actually yeah. kind of leads into my, the second question someone had asked during one of the lives is that if um, the Atkins diet was the same as ketogenic, so they're similar then? Yeah, so the Atkins diet, because I am that old now, um, the Atkins diet um, is a, was, a, was a famous sort of weight loss diet back in the or, um, early 2000s. And so piggybacked on that sort of thinking what developed out of John Hopkins, the modified Atkins diet. And um, very much an, a, an effective therapy initiated as an outpatient method. Um, it has a certain grams of carbohydrate goal that it sets the, that the team sets for the patient, um, and it's characterized by being a little bit more liberal, in that um, you don't really have to weigh and weigh your foods because in some methods you're using a, a, a scale to measure measure foods whereas in the modified atkins it has a more liberal relaxed approach where you're sort of label reading and doing some uh, math and and counting a little bit of carbohydrate but then protein's not really counted and fat sort of encouraged um and for for some it's very effective um especially if they have a hard time adapting more stricter lifestyle changes that you you see with a classical ketogenic diet um so the modified atkins is um, a little bit more liberal in how you meal prepare um and it is not as strong in terms of its shift of macronutrients so macronutrients meaning fat protein and carbs so your regular diet would um, shift to higher fat, adequate protein, and low carb, but not as big of a shift of high fat to low carb as you would with the classical version. Yeah, so the shift is, a, it's like, a, it's a gentle, it's a gentle shift. Where the classic version of the ketogenic diet, just to give it its sort of extreme option, you might use a digital scale to weigh out all your foods. You might have prescribed meal plans by provided by your dietitian, and you can go upwards of up to like 80 to 92% calories coming from fat and your carbohydrates going down as low as maybe even 2% of your overall calories. So it's very extreme, right? But can be very effective in terms of seizure control. That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, so you mm -hmm. kind of answered question three. Okay. <laughs> which was, do I have to work with my doctor to do this? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so, but let's expand on that. You do need, your, you need to get a doctor's referral in. Um, so the, the process to access ketogenic diet therapy would be through um, typically physician to physician referral. So if you're being followed by a neurology team that doesn't do keto, um, you would need to get a referral to a team that has a physician um, to receive that referral and um, be considered for as a treatment ketogenic diet therapy to be considered as a treatment option um, the doctor is also there to help support the monitoring um, so the monitoring we would often in my in my practice we often um, work with the physician to do blood work monitoring right before we begin the ketogenic diet and then every six months thereafter um, we might do um, monitoring of the heart or monitoring of the kidneys or uh, monitoring of the of the of the abdomen just to be um, just to be um, thorough in terms of our monitoring protocol so you do need a physician uh, on board with that when it comes to the practicalities of the diet and deciding how to um, implement it certainly the, the physician and dietitian work together with the family to figure out what's the best approach to um, to implement the diet and the dietitian the ketogenic dietitian plays a significant role in sort of the practical implementation and sustainability of the diet so whether it be to figure out and help that you find you know the practical foods in your community to make sure that this therapy can implement correctly a dietitian will help us do that they will also likely select um, um, proper measuring methods for you, like whether it be measuring cups or digital scale, and then they'll also help decide the ketogenic diet prescription sometimes um, and help you titrate up safely so that you don't have um, as much side effects. 
So it's a bit of a concert. I guess what I'm trying to impress upon the audience is that there's a lot of medical um, coordination that goes on when you're doing the medically supervised ketogenic diet. Definitely, it's, it definitely sounds like it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So then with having to coincide with medical and being followed with that, mm-hmm. when you do the ketogenic diet, would you see a ketogenic dietitian specifically or would any medical dietitian be, be okay? Yeah, that's a great question. And the answer is you need to have a ketogenic dietitian that has some experience in the field. Um, we're always trying to train up um, new and aspiring dietitians to come in and specialize into the field, but it is a specialty um, that not every dietitian has um, the scope of practice to do or the um, personal scope of practice to do. And as a regulated health professional, um, our our registered dietitians have to um, be aware of what their limits are, of what they can practice, um, but then So that's why you might say, I'm sorry, you know, if you approach a dietitian, let's say in your family practice, and um, they say, I'm sorry, that's not just in my scope of practice. That's them being vigilant to their, to their, their college and knowing that that's just not really in their skill set just yet. Um, So you do, you do have to try to, to get coordinated with um, a dietitian that has the experience. Awesome. So if someone doesn't do the ketogenic diet, um, for the epilepsy, is there other foods that they should avoid more than more so? That's a common question too. So if you are a person with epilepsy and you're not on the ketogenic diet, is there any nutritional changes you can make to make your situation better? I get that question a lot. And I think I always go back to fundamentals in that um, sometimes I see with patient the patient population that sometimes we're not eating regularly enough and so I think and that's not just the epilepsy population I think that's in general some populations just don't eat regularly enough sorry (coughs) so I would always go back and put my general dietitian hat on and say are you at least eating three meals a day can you at least you know because because that in itself is provides you overall health. Can you please, you know, can make sure, like some people graze through the day, but as long as it sums up to about three meals a day, I'm okay with that. But you know, there's a, the meal skipping, not such a good practice, right? Um, the other thing is um, if you want to think about complex carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates are simply that, they're carbohydrates that take time for your body to break down before it makes its the sugar sort of elevate in your bloodstream. And so you see that in your whole grain breads um, and in your vegetables, um, in the skins of your fruit um, and, and, you know, sort of browner rices and browner pastas and such. So you see that um, in sort of those sort of foods and those foods are actually quite healthy to gravitate towards. Um, And, if you were to make sort of a nutritional change to your lifestyle, I wouldn't ask that you take away carbohydrates because you still need, your body needs carbohydrates. Um, you, you, you cannot substitute the ketones for carbohydrates unless you have medical guidance, but you can choose the quality of carbohydrates that you consume. So I go to the whole grains, um, the more complex carbohydrates, and then recommendation is to usually avoid the simple carbohydrates like your juices your life will be fine if you don't have juice it will be fine if it doesn't have you don't have your you know sugary pop um, or have you know a lot of candy in your life and if you ever gravitate towards the ketogenic diet because your team suggests that you're that much more prepared because you've already sort of streamlined your eating um, to accommodate complex carbs you know and and to to be mindful of of eating regularly because all those habits you need to have sort of um, embedded into your routine and day to begin to take on the ketogenic diet. If that's ever an option to your family, yeah. Can the ketogenic diet help with other health conditions aside from epilepsy, whether it's like, um, I don't know, arthritis, joints, or another mental health? um, Yep, yep. Anything, any health issue could it help with or? So what, um, as we kind of always, Matthew, so Matthew's friends um, in the United Kingdom 
often um, takes the lead in trying to provide education of keto ketogenic diet and all its potential applications based on scientific evidence. And as I've grown with them, we see at our global symposiums that ketogenic diet therapy, as it applies to epilepsy, could potentially have other applications in other areas, some of which could be um, neurological disorders, or they're called metabolic disorders like glucose transporter one deficiency, or GLUT1 as we say. Um, another one is pyruvate dehydrogenase deficiency, um, and, or PDH as we say. And those are sort of disorders where you're born um, with the inability to use sugar in the brain. And so, or, or you, you can't use it very well anyways. Um, and so ketogenic diet therapy is very effective for those conditions. And that's talked about very much at our scientific conferences. Um, that one is probably a, key, a prescription for a longer, perhaps lifetime, depending on your team. And, um, and, and for that, we know it's sort of frontline therapy for those populations. And they, those, that population too will have a characteristic of epilepsy and the epilepsy will respond to the ketogenic diet. Um, so it, 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 the value of the ketogenic diet for those two conditions is sort of twofold. It helps their brain nutrition as well as it helps with their seizure control. Other conditions that are coming up um, in the evidence, but it's very early to make claims on it, is autism um, and as well as in depression. Um, so we're, we're watching the evidence on that right now um, and seeing there's some nice um, some basic science um, bench work going on suggesting that there could be potential benefit, but we still have to see um, its sort of comprehensive effect on uh, humans. So it's not something that we recommend yet, but it's something that's emerging. Awesome. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are some of the side effects that come along with the ketogenic diet? Yeah, great question. So with the medically supervised ketogenic diet, some of the, the common side effects as a practitioner who has seen it um, over many years is the one common thing for oral feeders um, who eat food, um, not tube feedings, but for food, usually the common side effect is constipation, which can be remedied. So put that up front, it can be remedied, but often the reason for sort of a constipation effect is that there is um, less fiber in the diet because you're, you're taking carbohydrates down. And so foods that are often rich in fiber are often found in our carbohydrate rich foods. So, um, so there's less bulk in the diet and believe it or not, lots of people don't like to drink. <laughs> so again, not just the epilepsy world, but just in general. So the general dietitian hat goes on and, and you have to actually encourage people to drink well you know, drink water well. That's another recommendation I provide to everybody is make sure you drink well and stay hydrated because it helps alleviate those side effects fairly quickly. And if you still have constipation on the ketogenic diet, then we work with the team to see if we can get some other laxative on board to keep you regular because it's not a nice feeling. Um, another common side effect that we see with the ketogenic diet is um, vitamin and mineral deficiencies. And those vitamin and mineral deficiencies can be very serious. And I see that across all versions of the diet, whether it be modified Atkins, to the low glycemic, all the way up to the classical ketogenic diet. And the reason for the vitamin mineral deficiencies we feel is because of the, diff the, the restricted foods choices and the smaller amounts of carbohydrate and protein food choices that we have um, that just don't provide the quantity of vitamins and minerals we need to keep um, a good health. So we, we often, the medical team will recommend a multivitamin. Oftentimes you'll get a calcium supplement on board, a vitamin D supplement, um, zinc and selenium are sometimes those supplements because you wouldn't normally need to do that in a regular diet. But because you're on a sort of a more extreme medical diet, you would need those supplements to be provided regularly. And when you don't when you have those deficiencies, it's not a benign deficiency. There can be um, side effects like perhaps 
um, so, um, a challenged immune system, like for example, for zinc, we know that zinc helps boost our immune system. So when you're zinc deficient, you put yourself at a bit of a compromise, which is not the greatest right now in the world of COVID-19 pandemic. So, um, and the other piece is like selenium, which potentially could affect your heart rhythm. So you wanna be able to make sure that you have good monitoring and supplementation with calcium. And the big one is always you wanna have good bones. So yeah, so there's lots of things that you have to kind of supplement to round out the complete nutrition for the ketogenic diet, but your team will decide what your combo combination of um, supplements will need to be. Um, what other side effects? Um, so less side effects, um, less chance, but it is documented well in literature, is um, uh, renal stones or kidney stones. Um, so it's about three to 7% chance of having sort of um, uh, renal stones secondary to the ketogenic diet. Um, cardiac abnormalities I mentioned earlier is potential but it's a low it's lower reported and lower um, in literature and then but people often the most common side effect people ask me is don't they get fat don't people who are on ketogenic diet get fat and they use the word fat um, and I said well just because you eat a lot of fat in your diet doesn't necessarily make you gain weight. At the end of the day, it's calories. So calories in and calories out. And what is the difference? So with the ketogenic diet, there will be calorie levels likely set and growth is always possible, right? Um, so growth, we try to make sure our kids if your pediatric cases try to hit their growth trajectory as best as they can. So kids do gain weight and they do grow on the ketogenic diet. Um, but sometimes you see in medical in, in the literature that sometimes are we reaching our full height potential on the ketogenic diet? And that's something we're keenly watching in literature as well, um, just to see if, if there is a slight effect on, on reaching your full linear growth. So there's, there's a few side effects that we do monitor, and there's many, many more. Um, there is a big consensus statement that our experts of the world have put out to, um, to kind of describe to the scientific world and the healthcare populations of the side effects that we should be monitoring for. But overall, overall, the ketogenic diet when monitored, the common ones are typically, okay, your vitamin mineral deficiencies, but you can circumvent that with supplements, constipation. And we always forget it affects your lifestyle and your socialization. That's a side effect too. So you need to be aware that, you know, when you're embarking on a medically supervised diet, it might change your lifestyle of how you do your groceries and how you approach your grocery shopping. And in the beginning, I, I, it may take you three hours to do your groceries because you're still learning about what the high fat foods are. But families have told me time and time again over my years, you know, after the first month, they figure out where to buy things and it gets better. By the three months, they're, they're so expert at what they're doing that, you know, they, they, they become very efficient at meal preparation and sourcing out their foods and looking at the recipe, the ketogenic recipes that they need to prepare. But the idea is that, you know, it's, it is a side effect. It's coming into your life. You're, you're having to change your lifestyle. And sometimes it changes the entire family's lifestyle of how to do things. People ask me, is the side effect costly? Like, is, it, is, is one of the side effects of ketogenic diet that it costs more money to the family? And that's a good question too. And for some, um, it may cost them more money because they choose to, they make choices to buy sort of the specialty food items in the grocery store, low carb breads, um, low carb candies, et cetera. But do you need those products to make the diet happen? Not really. Um, we have families who live on budgets and um, working with their, their teams and their, their ketogenic diet teams. You can use the foods that are available in your regular supermarket um, and just use them in the right um, sort of prescriptive manner um, and not really have it change your budget too much. Okay. Yeah. That was actually one of the questions I had. Oh, really? Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and talk to, to keep talk, keeping on talk topic about it being the cost of everything mm -hmm. for people who are on fixed incomes or fixed budgeting systems um, or low income. Are there programs or alternative ways to help it be more cost efficient for them? Yeah. So I think that's where your partnership moves strongly with your dietitian and perhaps your social worker or community workers. Um, the coverage differs from province to province. Now, I'm a girl from the West, um, so I'm originally from Saskatchewan, 
and have seen the coverage system for those in for ketogenic population vastly differ from what we have here in Ontario. So it is at the provincial level where we get coverage or no coverage on certain things. Um, oops, I'm just going to take that off my screen. Um, and so when you're on fixed income, again, it is possible to it not inflate your food budget, um, but you might need to be mindful of where to buy your foods, right? So whipping cream, I'm going to give you an example, can be very expensive. And you may use whipping cream as a fat source, but let's just use it for this example. Now, whipping cream on, on most grocery stores can be upwards of $6 per liter. Um, but if you're only going to be using 60 grams of it at a time, three times a day, you can figure out what that budget will be versus if you were buying usually skim milk and will it balance out? Um, now, the other way to think about it is you can, oftentimes we as dietitians or sometimes social workers or even, you know, budget shoppers will know where the great deals are, right? And so um, we can guide families to, you know, going to places where we know the whipping cream is $2 less all the time, right? So again, it's, it's about networking and connecting with, with your team um, and with community workers. Our social worker, I, I really enjoy working with my social worker who helps me access sort of government provincial funds to support um, support the medical diet therapy um, that we have here in Ontario. So that would be something um, I would redirect to my social worker or my community worker because they're far more versed in all the government programs that supplement income for, for diet therapy than I am. Earlier you said that um it can cause like deficiencies in some ways. If you had um, prior, if you had health issues prior to starting the ketogenic diet, mm -hmm. um, is there some health issues that would prevent you from being able to go on the ketogenic diet medically? Yeah, that's a really good question too. So in yeah, there's an international consensus statement and uh, put forward by the experts of the world in the field. And in that um, paper, it really clearly identifies that ketogenic diet needs, you need to be very careful before you start. You should screen your patients um, before you begin because you could create harm. Um, and so one of the big impressions on the paper is that people um, may have what's called inborn errors of metabolism, and they might have very mild versions of it. Um, and when you change your, your diet lifestyle and begin the ketogenic diet while you have the, this inborn error of metabolism, you may create what's called a metabolic crisis in your body. Um, and that's why we screen for those conditions before we start. Because if we find, for example, that you have a mild version of fatty acid oxidation defect and your body just doesn't like to metabolize a lot of fat, this diet will not work for you and it'll actually make you very sick. Um, so there are certainly a, a quite a big chart. Of, it describes quite a big population where the ketogenic diet could be very dangerous to, um, to employ. Um, other things that people will consider is um, whether they have cardiovascular comorbidities. Do they have high cholesterol issues? Um, will they have pancreatic issues. Um, we won't be applying it right now to families that are people, women who are pregnant. Um, so um, that's something that I don't believe I've heard people employing those. Um, we have seen some not apply the ketogenic diet to breastfeeding moms um, just yet. Um, so because we're not too sure how it'll affect the breast milk or we know how it'll affect the breast milk, but is that fair to the baby um, that's consuming? Um, but, you know, there's a mixed philosophy in that arena. So there are certain populations with certain medical conditions, some with the pancreatic issue, some with high cholesterol issues, some with heart and cardiovascular issues that maybe you need a little bit more um, vigilant sort of um, analysis on it before you embark on it. Or if you're considered to be a candidate, despite that you have some of these comorbidities, the team will will modify your monitoring protocol. And you might you might have me monitored a little bit more closely than the, the, their typical protocol, um, just to make sure that you're you're safe while you have the therapies going on. 
Awesome. Um, is there a certain time limit people are usually on the ketogenic diet for? Or um, is it safe, like, is it safe to be on it for like certain amount, certain amount of time rather than a shorter amount? Yeah, we do know, um, again, the experts have suggested at least two years on the ketogenic diet. Um, and you can consider, you can consider um, talking to your team about reducing it. Um, but some have talked about using the ketogenic diet for as long as it works and as long as it's not bringing harm. And I've certainly been in the arenas of both. You know, some families where the physician and, and the team saying, you know what, you're two years with seizure reductions of 90% or seizure free now. Do you want to consider weaning? Sometimes the family drives that conversation. We don't drive that conversation. And then I have families who have um, been successful with the ketogenic diet and they just don't want to to go any other way. They want to continue on with um, the ketogenic diet. And I've had some that have stayed on with me for, um, for many years, you know, many beyond the two years, sometimes five, sometimes 10 years uh, and beyond. Um, but again, it's all about the monitoring and making sure that the, that the diet is not harmful, bringing harm to them. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so if people have more questions that they want to ask, that they want, want to know or more information they want to find out, what's the way that they could reach out and, and get this information? Like where yep. can we go to get this? So what we have, what's up and coming, um, and maybe we can slot it into this, into this podcast, is we have a new website that's coming up. Um, it'll be at uh, matthewsfriendscanada.org. We're also, we also can be found on matthewsfriends.org. Um, and then our information can uh, be sent to info at matthewsfriendscanada.org. Um, and we'll, we'll try to turn around those questions um, as best we can. And what you'll see also on our new website, you'll see um, some education tools that we have, um, some recipes that we're trying to put together. Um, and our mother, sort of our mother organization, the matthewsfriends.org, have um, a whole lot more of like sort of their wonderful vast amount of uh, recipes, a little bit using the UK UK sort of ingredients, but certainly translatable to Canada. Um, there's also a YouTube channel that you can see us on um, to see some cooking demonstrations um, and demystify that the ketogenic diet is not tasty, that it's really not, um, it's not doesn't look good, <laughs> that it is, um, that it isn't savory enough because we can probably prove you wrong with a few few recipes and a few pictures. Um, ketogenic diet therapy and its cooking has come a long way and there's a lot more um, food foods that we can use that um, that make it a whole lot more fun to prepare. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I also forgot we had the Facebook, the Twitter, we have a Facebook and Twitter and all that, Instagram, you know, all of that. So I'll yeah. give that all to you. Is there anything else you'd like to add that I didn't ask or that you think would be imp important or for people to know or anything at all? Yeah, the, the, the ketogenic diet um, is a treatment option that you need to discuss with your, with your, with your doctors and with your, with your nurse practitioners and your team. Um, its success rate um, is about 50% of those who attempt the ketogenic diet will have greater than 50% seizure reduction. Um, there is a possibility to achieve greater than 90% seizure reduction and even go seizure free. Um, but that, you know, that comes with commitment and it comes with, you know, um, being ready to take on sort of that lifestyle change. Um, so that, that's something that to, to consider. Um, and it's not, it's not, it's different than taking a medication really, because it, it, it's quite a coordinated effort to, to carry through. Um, the other thing is that if anybody needs more information about the ketogenic diet or would like to have um, a virtual session with us for information that certainly can be requested through our email. Um, it seems that with with the way the world is, I think virtual education is something that Matthews Friends Canada can certainly do coast to coast. Um, it's probably a safer way to provide that education um, right now, especially when we're uh, facing the uncertain times of COVID-19. So why is it called Matthews Friends? So the organization is called Matthew's Friends, named after the boy Matthew, uh, Matthew Williams, who is the son of Emma Williams. And Emma Williams um, is an amazing mother um, based out of the United Kingdom who has uh, Matthew, who was diagnosed with Dravet syndrome. And with Dravet syndrome, um, he had 
very catastrophic seizure syndrome, a seizure syndrome, and had multiple thousands of seizures um, in his short life as a child, um, in, in his childhood, pardon me, he's still with us. And he, he had tried many anti-seizure medications um, and Emma had inquired about ketogenic diet therapy when she knew that the drugs were starting to be very refractory, either giving him lots of side effects or just weren't effective in controlling his seizures. She inquired about the ketogenic diet therapy, but then was um, dismissed really about offering it to her son. And it was um, for reasons of that it's unpalatable, that it's, um, that it's you know, not possible, you can't sustain it. So all the sort of stigmas that come along that we've always been fighting against with ketogenic diet therapy and and she eventually circled back to the therapy and requested that it be um that it be tried with her and she did so with um dr helen cross um in the united kingdom at the great ormond um, hospital and lo and behold when he embarked on the ketogenic diet he achieved um near seizure freedom and see i think he achieved seizure freedom and then was able to wean down on his anti-seizure medications all within a span of like a year. Now it's a very successful case. Um, not all medications get weaned down that quickly, but um, certainly um, he was very successful on the ketogenic diet. And Emma, of course, can you imagine how she felt, right? And so she thought, wow, this, this therapy is an amazing and effective therapy, but I was provided misinformation in the beginning. And so from that, she put her energies into creating um, the Matthews Friends organization, which initially just started off as a parent group. And bless her that she did start it because from the parent group grew um, an organization that has now gone global in the past, I think, 14 to 15 years. And she hosts global symposiums to support healthcare, healthcare professionals like me to make sure we stay current and to educate the new healthcare professionals that ketogenic diet therapy is even a possible treatment option. So she's quite the force to be reckoned with and has really been a blessing to our world and has not only supported the families um, that are considering this therapy, but the families that are on the therapy, but also the healthcare professionals. And a lot has been accomplished within that decade and a half. And Matthew is now weaned from the ketogenic diet, but he is a very happy boy. Um, and he's a great success case. And so from that, he is, he is sort of our, our lead. He is the Matthew, we are very proud to serve under Matthew's story um, and hope that Matthew's story can be repeated through many other people that uh, are able to successfully implement the ketogenic diet that's amazing mm -hmm. i mean it, it's it sucks that she was given misinformation in the beginning but mm -hmm. as she round back and really like went for it and yeah write the misinformation and yeah just the story all as a whole yeah yeah, yeah it is it's, it's good that she turned that those emotions into something so powerful and good right yes. the abundance that we all benefited from her um learning from that was good and I you know we're forever grateful for that you know so yeah a, quite a quite an amazing woman kind of like you Cassidy you, you kind of to, you know told the world now it's purple day on March 26th <laughs> and we're going to acknowledge that so that's pretty amazing right so you know it takes leaders like you um you know across the world to make make big difference and big change thank you you're welcome um, thank you so much for joining today, joining me today. I definitely learned a lot. I wasn't too educated on the ketogenic diet, so it was definitely informative for me. Um, yeah, I look forward to working with you in the future. Yeah, Cassidy, this is wonderful. It's great to finally meet you, and thank you for reaching out. It was great meeting you, too. Um, yeah. You definitely keep in touch. Yes. I'd love to keep working with you guys. Um, and this is also really important too, like the ketogenic diet, I have heard it help people mm -hmm. and people have talked to me about it. Um, so it's definitely good to learn about and it's all, all, all epilepsy awareness is good too. So you, said, yeah. you guys are doing an amazing job. Thank you. I'm so glad I get to help sh support and share your guys' information and organization with the world. Yes. Um, you guys definitely have a lot to offer. Um, and I'm glad we are partners in Purple Day, and I look forward to future talks and gatherings. Yes, thank you so much, Cassidy, for having me. Thank you for coming on. Have a great day, and take yeah. care. Take care. Bye. Bye. I feel stronger 
up and you are there.